Ready, Timmy P.I. It is time once again to activate smart ass mode. Haha! <laughs> Didn't see that shit coming to you. So, here are a few theories I have regarding three of the primary cast members of Total Drama. You know that franchise that's been running for over 10 years now? Yeah, that's the one. Let's get started. First of all, we have Jeff Hatchett. I believe he is a former military soldier who got called up by Chris McLean to help him co-host the show, hence the Total Drama franchise that was created and revolving specifically around the love-hate friendship that these two share. Notice these faces. Now, Chef Hatchet suffers from what many would like to consider as being a complex form of post-traumatic stress disorder, otherwise known as CPTSD. Complex post-stress, you know, the same thing. You know, basically just worded it differently because his situation varies greatly. Especially considering all the shit that Chris McLean put him through throughout the show's run. Which, by the way, as far as I know, is still ongoing. Not that it matters, but it totally doesn't matter. Anyway, moving on to the next topic, we have the host of the Total Drama franchise itself, Chris McLean. Who, by the way, is an absolute psychopath who is also a murderer and does this show in secret deliberately to hide the fact that he is organizing a mass murder ring. Pretty shocking, isn't it? Considering how the guy wanted to be famous but Hollywood turned it down for whatever reason because they thought they could play God and God was playing them the whole time. Turns out Chris McLean doesn't think any differently than they do. He thinks he's God, so apparently, as you can see in these pictures, he created the Total Drama franchise specifically as a host, mind you, to operate this secret and otherwise esoterically hidden mass murder ring which also involves teenagers by the way and speaking of teenagers let's talk about one right now of course i'm talking about izzy the woman with multiple personality disorder with multiple personalities about her including brainzilla naming one off the top of my head because i can't remember anything else right off time anyway this is the smartest woman in the show. She has an IQ of 188, which literally indicates to me that she is a top tier savant with not only multiple personality disorder, but also a god complex. Her ego is as wide as a light year and she has this distinct capability of having multiple personalities, namely her Brainzilla personality, which shows off her incredible IQ of 188, as mentioned in one of Total Drama's episodes, namely from season 2 or 3, depending on which one you watch. Anyhow, She's also of Irish descent, hence her ginger hair. So that makes a lot of sense, because Irish people are very smart. I know that because my father was half Irish, which makes me 75% Irish, 25% German, which essentially means that my father was basically full-blooded Irish, and my 
mother, of course, was half German, half American. So, that uh, pretty much explains it, doesn't it? I mean, not that it matters, but nobody's gonna care anyway, so... It's not really gonna mean anything. The bottom line is simple. Izzy is a very smart woman who will go to any length to prove her capabilities, not just as a human being, but as a secret weapon to the FBI, the CIA, and the rest of the Deep State, as proven throughout the show's run. You're probably asking me why that is. Well, just look it up! You'll find out yourself! SOMEBODY TOUCH A MY SPAGHETTI! Who wants to talk about Roman Reigns? Anyone? Anyone? Seriously, though, who wants to talk about Roman Reigns? I do! No way, right, let's talk about Roman Reigns. Yay! So, Roman Reigns is Vince McMahon's secret hobby. Yeah, that's right. He's gone full on gay with Roman Reigns. Pushing him for four or five years. He pushed him at WrestleMania 30 to beat his son in law in their stable. He pushed him at WrestleMania 31 only to lose to a cashing in Seth Rollins, who cashed in his money in the bank to become the new champion. Oh, by the way, he lost to Brock Lesnar at this year's WrestleMania in 2018 in New Orleans, and he decided to become the two in The Undertaker's 24 and 2. Of course, this was a year before The Undertaker got his 24 and his 24 and 2. Meanwhile, we had Triple H job out to Reigns, we had The Undertaker job out to Reigns, and yet, he is still not over. Why in the fuck do we continue to push Roman Reigns? I will never understand. Hey, I've got an idea. Why do we push Roman Reigns? Because he's our top guy. Because he's our number one. Shut up! You said that right. By the way, are you Vince McMahon? Yeah, I'm Vince McMahon. So can I tell you something? Yeah, go ahead and tell me. Yeah! Ah! Hey, that's a perfect Christmas. Hey! Get out of here. Seriously, though, I don't, I don't even care. About the only reason why I watched WWE and Hopkins since 1993, pretty much since I was born, is to see how far down the shit this product would go. Meanwhile, how about we talk about a bunch of other bullshit that nobody needs to care or give two fucks about? Let's talk about Netflix! In memoriam of Netflix. Killed by ISIS, democracy, and the Obamas. Now, if you will, please, let us all pay tribute to Netflix who, by the way, was killed by Obama, as we take part in a moment of silence, as we told the proverbial bullshit bell ten times. Why the fuck would the guys at Netflix even consider doing a series of movies based on the Obama family and thus ruining any bit of credibility that they had 
in the 21 years prior to this company killing decision. This is literally business suicide. Why? I mean, seriously, uh, does, does anybody care about fucking Barack Obama anymore? All he does is suck Hamas's dick. And he sucks fucking donkey dung for all I care. He sucks donkey dung. Nobody cares about donkey dung. Nobody wants to suck donkey dung except the people who are too selectively retarded enough to believe in that shit. Anyway, point proven. Barack and Michelle Obama raking in a bunch of cash thanks to Netflix and George Soros and the Clintons and the Bushes and the Careys and the Pelosi's, the Reeds, the Schumer's and pretty much the entire bastard DEEP STATE DEEP IN SHIT! Yeah, because reasons! And we all know what they are. I mean, just, just, seriously though, take a moment to, to look at this fucking train wreck. Look at all these people that agree with me in their respective tweets. Seriously though, follow these people. Elizabeth P, T. Marie Alexander, ACE, I'm shit, I'm sheepdog, come and get them to A, Asia, right, RN, Ale, TJ Barrett, female angler, about everything, we support 4S in the wool, all these people in general, please follow their accounts on Twitter. You will never be disappointed with what they have to offer. By the way, Boycott Netflix is going to be the biggest boycott in internet history, much less the history of the world. And I think that's a severe understatement at that. Ah! I'm a big dum dum, shooting bullshit out of my dum dum. Now me want gum gum so I can go jump jump, motherfucker. just removed chairs from a team who DISRESPECTED the National Anthem. DISRESPECTED?! DISRESPECTED?! Yeah, DISRESPECTED. And gives to ki- and gives to veterans. You thought I was going to say, not to suck your lip. Uh, I didn't really care about that. Yeah, but he gives them to veterans. And this video is a wake-up call for all millennials. Because everything that they have right now was given to them by an older generation. Remember, Memorial Day, people! Memorial Day! No! Here's how I responded to it. And they want to be NBA players, even though they're anti American, even though they're pro Antifa, even though they suck Democratic donkey dong. Even though they were handed everything on silver platters, even though they're pro-terrorism, even though they eat Tide Pods, please, you got to be kidding me. Fuck, man, you kidding me? What a joke. And just a reminder to all you people out there, to all you spoiled dumbass athletes who make millions of dollars every fucking goddamn year, and shit on us with your $100 bills. Freedom isn't free. We do fun! Alright. Going now to Tommy Lauren. Another fellow Trump. She made this ironic tweet about a post from Fox Business. Tweeted that NFL spokesman Brian McCarthy told Fox that the league rejected.
projected a Super Bowl 42 ad from the American Veterans Group due to its political nature because it contained the words, Please stand. Yeah, standing to, to, standing to respect the flag, Anthem to Ray Milton, who fight overseas, so spoiled athletes can make millions to throw a ball. Super offensive and controversial. Wow. Just wow. Wow. Wow! You don't fucking say! is giving 100%. So you athletes need to get off your spoiled millionaire asses and knees and stand for the flag for which these men gave 100%. Because reasons, and we all know what they are. Meanwhile, Political Magazine posted this tweet on May the 25th, five or so days ago, I think. I no, it's more like three as of this recording. They said that the depiction of protesting athletes as spoiled and rich has become a durable meme in the culture war. As powerful a symbol as the welfare queens of the Reagan era. Yeah, that's because Colin Kaepernick is a Muslim dick sucker who supports Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and willingly sold his soul for Satan for 15 nanoseconds of fame. Not 15 minutes, not 15 seconds, not even 15 frames. 15 nanoseconds of fame. Meanwhile, back in February, my friend Scott Rickoff, also known by his Twitter name, Drain the Swamp, came up with this tweet. TV ratings for Winter Olympics opening ceremony down 10% from Sochi. No one cares about stupid athletes! Ratings for the Winter Olympics opening ceremony in the first few days of broadcasts are in. And the results are not good for NBC. Also known as the National Brainwashing Corporation. Yeah. Get that in your head and stick it where the sun don't shine, right? Meanwhile, my friend Janice TX Blessed writes the following in her tweet. And by the way, I totally agree with all these people mentioned here. I'm really not caring too much about the Olympics this time. As for the hateful rhetoric that the spoiled little athletes are skewing, they seem to be representing themselves, not their country. Didn't watch NFL. I think the Olympics can do without my viewership also. Cause they're a bunch of bad facts! Alright ladies and gentlemen, we are live. And I've got some laughs for you. Let me tell you, man. You're gonna like this. Oh my god, this is Oh, I just made a new favorite friend on Facebook! Holy shit! Yeah! Tupac <laughs> Shakur is grinning in his grave! And you can believe that! So amusing and so interesting, I couldn't help but share them with you. Because these are so true! These are so true! These actually happen! These things actually happen in real life! Like, like this first one, this, this guy apparently made a confession on April the 25th at 8.08 p.m. He says, oh, and this is not millennials are retarded. <laughs> from some guy, which obviously won't be named here. He died of shame, obviously. Sometimes I like to lay in a bathtub and get a bone. I'll let the water rise lie. <laughs> it barely sticks out of the top. 
before doing all this, I catch a fly and rip its wings off so it can't fly. Once the water's right and just my tip is sticking out, I put the fly on it. Since it can't fly or swim, it panics and just runs around really fast in circles. I let this happen until I come, you never have been drowning a fly in my team, which is the best part for me. What? Oh! <laughs> This this post is so unequivocally true. Look, some of y'all wouldn't be having baby mama drama today if you had just listened to the cookie. And there's a photo that literally insists that this fortune cookie told the photographer to masturbate. Why not feed yourself to a good time instead of waiting for someone else to do it? Soki soki long time, huh? Yo, you may be sure to have been remembering that. Why is it in your body that I never did on that side? Tupac Shakur is grinning in his grave, and you can believe that. Where the hell do you think I got it? Okay, this this is another one of my favorite posts. It is. I swear this came from Clinton's deleted tweets. Hillary Clinton pointing out this photograph and said, "I told you he's not your." Yes, it is. And you can thank this beauty woman for that, man. Look at that. She's pretty. She's prettier than your daughter and your entire family. And you can stick that up your ass and shut it! Dumbass decides to buy something like this. That's here. To which he replies. So yeah, so she has this thing. What kind of dog do you have? And then he responds with, I don't have a dog. I'm just retarded because I'm a millennial and selective retardation is being you. Oh, man, 
It's Double Side! I've got a show to run! Okay, I'm gone. Alright. So. I should have warned you about his antics at the beginning of his segment. Apparently, he didn't warn you all that this would be TBCW rated content. Meaning, if you can't handle the cringe that is in this fucking shit, do not look at it, or watch another video, or go check out another YouTube channel, or another website, because you don't fucking belong here. Right? Right. I mean, it's so fucking obvious, isn't it? It's, it's actually quite oh, obvious. Yeah. Oh my god! Oh my god! The core is grinning in his grave! And you can believe Jesus. that! A corporation for public broadcasting, which is made possible by suckers like you. Thanks, you.